from Sports Center, ladies and gentlemen, L. Duncan. Yeah. How are you, Al? Let me go this way. Yeah, you'll I'm find adjusting it. on the fly. Yeah. To there we go. There, there's a sweet right here. Okay. <laughs> Boom. Hi, Boom. fellas. Hey, you do. Hey, great weekend, great cover. Hey, you've been crushing it. Go. You guys have been Work crushing out. it. I hope you can feel that. Love, I gotta be honest. It's um, maybe it's just uh, because I'm triggered. I, you know, as I told you guys last time I was on the show, I pissed off all the Albany people. So they were attacking me, and then Boston Connor sucked Fairfield all over me. They were <laughs> mad at me. Yeah. Sorry. So, so it was. So it was. It's been a little overwhelming for everybody to be like really positive. I'm like, well, is this a setup? I feel like uh, I feel like something's coming, but it's been really, really cool. Now keep right. You gotta enjoy the wins. Yeah, yeah that's right. Gotta enjoy the wins. I'm right. enjoy it. Yeah, I'm enjoy it. Because there's other stuff coming down the road. You know, we all. Oh, know. I know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we all. We all. Everybody that's in this world understands that. So you gotta enjoy the wins. Speaking of the wins, tonight Elite Eight is taking place, and it feels like you came on and you said. Hey, bet the favorites, mm -hmm. even Fairfield. Well, that was a good bet for her. Yeah, it was. Absolutely <laughs> was. But you said bet the favorites. You know, that's how the women's basketball tournament has kind of ended up in the years past. All the stars are still around, seemingly. All the stars are still around. L, this has got to be dream for the women's March Madness, right? I mean, this is – so when the selection show came out, um, first of all, one of my biggest character flaws in the world is that I love being right. And when the selection committee gave us who was going to be in the tournament, I identified in that lower left quadrant that I thought NC State could pull an upset. I didn't think um, that it was a super tough quadrant. So I am sitting at 99.7% right now on my bracket. My bracket no my way. Yeah. Hell, hey, take 99. another win. Yeah. Take another Go. win. It's Hell unreal. yes. That's phenomenal. I got a big fail coming. I got a big fail coming for sure. But uh yeah, no, no, this no. is great. All the one all the one seeds made it to at the very least the Elite Eight. Obviously, they're not gonna all be in the final four because NC State beat Texas, but we've got the biggest matchup, something that we circled last year at the national championship. Like, guys, the ticker tape is falling, LSU's cutting down nets, and we were all going get this matchup one more time next year it'd be amazing i wish it was a little later in the tournament but we'll take it tonight yeah we absolutely will caitlin clark angel reese angel reese has come out and talked about how she enjoys battling against caitlin clark and caitlin clark yeah was on video this weekend not helping up her teammate whoa yeah, she's so locked in <laughs> can't take a five second thing caitlin clark i think is an actual robot potentially yes who's just here for one thing and one thing alone needs to win a national championship like i assume that is legitimately how she feels on the inside the pressure has to be absurd has she shown any of that at all from the outside I, I don't think we've seen her talk much i don't know how much you've gotten a chance to chat with her legitimately has she she seemingly lives up to the pressure here every single evening still she she is actually like the terminator but she's actually really affable and nice and huh? um she's probably the perfect person to be in this situation affable yeah like really nice and charming yeah like great, really work. Cool, great really, work yeah, yeah, yeah great perfect work. great work yeah i hit you ten dollar words um She's, I think if anybody is like poised enough to uh, be in this position, because you're right, it's not just that she's got the pressure of the world on her. She's kind of caring in many ways. People assume that she's sort of carrying the sport. They're not only talking about what she's doing for women's basketball at the college level, but now they're saying like she could carry the WNBA. She's got NIL deals that she's dealing with. She's got the media that she's dealing with. Like there's a lot on this girl's shoulders and she has handled it so well. Yes, she's emotional on the court. I know that whenever someone is a really big star, we like to start to, you know, pull at the seams a little bit. We like to find character flaws in them. And if she can complain to the rest a little bit too much, she admits it. Okay, she got kicked out of like elementary school gym because she's too competitive. Her coach said that she calls technicals on her at practice because she's emotional. But she just really is the ultra competitor and she wants to win. And losing the way that they lost last year in the national championship, it has been eating at her. She's wanted this opportunity to get back a little revenge on LSU and it's all coming down to this. So yes, Caitlin Clark is is she's she's hyper focused, but she's also incredibly deferential. She's also incredibly oh, no. uh, complimentary. I thought myself complimentary of the rest of her squad too, which is really really cool. I saw you try to drop another one of those ten dollar words. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. I, I, yeah. I get my best. Too. Very affable answer there, and yeah, then you uh, close it with a bang. You did fantastic. Go ahead, AJ. Oh, uh, I'm sure you're aware of the the five million dollar offer that Ice Cube has for Caitlyn to come play in the Big Three. Do you think there's any possibility that she's entertaining that? No. <laughs> Whoa! I don't. I don't. Five million. I don't. I mean, listen, 
Yeah, I know. I get it. She is a she's a businesswoman and all those things. And like people just keep looking at it at the surface with the WNBA salary, which, yes, is not going to come close to a five million dollar offer like the first year. But she's got a lot of power. There are negotiating rights coming up, TV rights that are coming up within the next year. She's got incredible endorsements. Like, do we think that because she's going to go to the next level, those are going to disappear? Caitlin Clark's going to make plenty of money i think that the cool thing about what women have to do and also the burden that they have to do is not only do they want to compete at the highest level and become great athletes but they also feel the burden of carrying the torch and growing the game yeah. and caitlin's been so clear about that for so long i can't imagine she would bail at this moment and switch gears and go play in the big three i think the whole point is you shouldn't have to go play with a bunch of dudes in order to be legitimized and to get that money i think the point is to water the grass where you are right the grass is green where you water it i think that's probably i'm just assuming here i don't know but it feels like based on everything that she said it's much more important to her to accomplish a dream of playing in the w she never had a dream when she was a kid on her storyboard to play in the big three so yes yeah, she's a businesswoman would she entertain it she'd be crazy not to i just don't see it happening. well i don't know if the big three was around whenever she was growing up <laughs> yeah. to be fair yeah. yep true to be fair might have been on the board you can update you know. can update dream board I agree. you can update I agree. vision board keep it moving yeah, keep yeah. it going keep striving for more and more and more and she could be representing for the WNBA in the big three whenever she's beating everybody, you know, trying to yeah. grow the game. Hey, WNBA players. I mean, there's a way you could spin it, but we all agree with what you were saying immediately upon hearing it. We thought good idea for the big three because Caitlin brings the rating. Like, mm -hmm. ratings is, you talk about leaving the game better than it was before. It's like the big business conversation always resorts back to, well, how many people are watching it for our marketing and sponsors? It's like this college basketball tournament, for, hey, ratings, right? We're talking about more people watching this tournament than ever before. Like this, so last year's um, Iowa LSU game for the Natty, it did almost 10 million viewers on ABC. It was the most watched women's basketball game, period, on record ever. And while cable, obviously, as you guys know, is a little different than ABC, like you can't get bunny ears with ESPN, um, it could rival that number. I think, listen, I don't blame Ice Cube at all for offering her that. I mean, hell, if you run the National Pickleball League, you should be asking Caitlin Clark to come. Whatever sport it is, you should be asking Caitlin Clark to come and grace her and grace her presence there because she is she is a marketing machine she is a money making machine we've just never seen really anything like her and that's not um to say that we haven't had incredibly talented women play for many many years in the space because they have but she's just sort of this unique player that is really capitalizing with um more eyes than ever on the women's game so yes i don't blame him for doing it i just it just doesn't feel like part of her brand agreed. to jump ship and i don't think the wnba is going to let her play agreed and with how locked in she is allegedly to her routine and everything adding 10 more games in the middle of the season feels like a interesting decision but hey never know five million could become 10 yeah. million in a counter yeah, and true. then are you having a conversation or not we shall see let's stay with caitlin clark go ahead ty yeah so l how do you think iowa wins tonight like what do they have to do in order to win tonight i think they're one and a half point favorites last i checked but it seemed like most of the public is on lsu i'm a little i don't know if they should be favorites but uh, they, I think they played their most complete game in a long time against Colorado. All five starters, obviously, in double figures. But then all this shit with Kim Mulkey comes out. Like It seems like that's kind of galvanized the mm -hmm. LSU team a little bit. What do you think Iowa has to do in order to win tonight? First of all, it doesn't take much for LSU to have a chip on their shoulder. Like Last year, they had a chip on their shoulder because they were a three seed and people were saying they couldn't really score. They love to sort of take on this role like it does. These galvanizing moments are really big for LSU. Here's what I'll tell you guys, because I'm lucky enough to sit, as you saw this weekend, with some of the best basketball minds in the business and Andrea Carter and Chinea Gumake. This is what they keep saying when I ask them the same question, because these are two very different teams from last year. The issue for Iowa is that LSU has Angel Reese in the post. She had them last year, but then they went in the transfer portal and got Anissa Morrow, and those two are walking double-doubles. Like, they just got a size advantage. Hannah Stolke uh, replaced Monica Zanano as their post player. Monica graduated last year. She was instrumental in their fi Final Four run last year. Um, she's just not – they just don't have the size advantage that LSU has. Angel Reese has the benefit of playing in the SEC where she's had to bang uh, up against Aaliyah Boston last year, Camilla Cardoso this year, who's six foot seven for South Carolina. They just played Lauren Betts in the UCLA game, who's six foot seven. Like she's been used to getting bodied and being very physical. I don't think the same applies for Hannah Stolke, but here's where Iowa can win. 
threes are the great equalizer. If you're undersized, but you're hitting threes, you can win these kinds of games. So it's exactly what you guys said. It was an incredibly complete game against Colorado, something we thought would be a little bit tougher, if I'm being honest. But Caitlin was out there dishing. She had 15 assists. And I think that what it's going to take this year, Caitlin has said it too, is stop trying to just live and die by the three. She took 19 three-pointers in that national championship game last year. They ended up losing by 17 points. She wants to get to the free throw line. Uh-huh. She wants to drive. She wants to get Angel Reese into foul trouble. you got to get Angel Reese out of that game. The other big issue for Iowa is that the real X factor this year is Flage Johnson. She is on freaking believable it's like she's elevated her game not only from last year but just in this tournament as well it would take a lot they'd have to out rebound lsu which would be difficult limit second chance points and they got to get the three going if the rest of the role players on iowa can have the game of their lives they can win oh and okay sound like you gave them a lot of hope there at the very <laughs> tail end. <laughs> all the role players need to be able to say is it ain't my fault Shout out to... Uh, Did I do that? Yeah, Flo, Flo J uh, sampling that with her new uh, song that is available right now. Go ahead and download that. She said the other day, I love that. Everybody's going to knock uh-huh. because I rap and I play basketball, so I work my ass off. She had like 24 points or something like that. Balled up. Absolute yeah. stud. Love it. Love everything. Pat, about- Pat, when she, Pat, when she goes and performs, like even during the summer when they're not in season, when she goes and performs, she makes her mom go find a gym so that before and Sorry. after her concerts, she's working out. She's always in the gym, and it's showing. She is unreal right now. So is that game taking place, LSU and Iowa? in that gym that had two different three-point lines? Hmm. Is that how? <laughs> hell, what the hell? No. How's this happen? Where was it? It was up in Portland, right? Which I think I think it there could Portland. be a deal with Canada to give them Portland <laughs> and we get Windsor. Nah, like that, nah, nah, that kind nah, of nah, yeah. Nah, yeah, we'll nah, give you guys nah, Portland. Nah. Just I mean, you can't even get the uh, same three-point line on both sides. Of the, in the NCAA tournament, Sweet 16, I mean, what are we? What are we? We'll take Windsor. Canada gets Portland. Perfect. Feels like an okay deal, but yeah. nonetheless, I'm sure there's great things up there, but this is... How's this happen now? What did they say? They said they're going to change it and they're sorry. How, what how, what yeah. does that mean? It's so weird too. Cause like we're sitting there on the desk, we're getting ready. You know, we just like ended the South Carolina game. We're getting ready to tip from this game. And my producer jumps in my ear and she's like, okay, we may have a developing story out of Portland, you know? And like the girls are talking, you know how it happens on live TV. Your producers are talking, the analysts are talking and I'm like, okay, what's this story? And she's like, There is a discrepancy with the three-point line in Portland that apparently was missed in the last round in the Sweet 16. One of the sides is is shallower than the other side, but they don't know which side is right. Oh, my gosh. This is real life. This happened multiple times. I thought it was just like a one-game situation. No, 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 no. Apparently, this happened also in the Sweet 16, which is, I think, in part why the coaches were like, this guy fine. I mean, listen, up. right? The, the <laughs> good and the bad news is, like, both teams have to use one of those sides. Like, so it's, it is what it is in terms of that. I also think they discovered this too late in the process. Mm-hmm. Like, listen, I've never been a professional athlete, but you guys have been, Pat, AJ, like, you go through a rhythm when you get ready for the game. You do your shoot around. You have your traditions. You have your super, whatever it looks like to get it game ready. If someone tells you minutes before the game, we have this discrepancy. If you're cool with it, we can tip normal time. If you're not cool with I it, you they're going to either have to stop. You think they knew? I bet you numerous shooters. Shooters would know. Like, I, I think shooters would know. Just as somebody who casually shoots over here. But they were probably, like, laughed at when they were like, hey, this is right. March Madness. They get two. There's no way. That, there's no Somebody told them no way. Yeah, I assume people, I assume women on both teams knew, like, when the game was happening. I assume. Well, the internet sleuths they were like laughing. people. They people like looked at. I mean, all you had to do was just look at center court, and you're like, "This doesn't look right at all." Just the eye test, you could tell it was off. Just like the feel, and, you know, and like as somebody who had yeah, to kick the, the ball, had to kick a ball. Like if a ball was either overinflated or a little bit deflated, could tell. I think like I'd assume shooters who are. Like, well, yeah. why am I deep yeah. on this side? One hundred percent. And then I'm splash on this. I, Definitely. I, but I bet you they were laughed at. I honestly, I, yep. I just, they were like, no way this could be real. No way. God, but it is. So, hey, way to, way to bounce through some adversity. Yeah. Huge. Way to go through adversity. They really did. And shout out to the court makers just saying, you know what? Yeah. How about this? Two different lengths. Huh. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> Figure it out.
If you're a good shooter, right. figure it out. Connor's got a question for you, L. Yeah, L. Looking to the okay. other game tonight. Obviously, you know UConn is the storied franchise, but with you know Juju Watkins and USC and what they're doing, being the one seed and everything, is it kind of a uh, wash for them? Even though they are three point underdogs, does that surprise you at all? And do you, how do you think that game goes tonight? It didn't surprise me. I actually had I had UConn and USC playing at this point, and I had UConn advancing to the Final Four for only this reason, the the benefit of experience. I mean, Gino's been to like 17 of these. Like, he's always here. Paige Beckers has, despite some of her injuries, has more experience. Um, and and But it wouldn't surprise me the way that Juju Watkins is playing for her to win this game, too. I mean, she has literally put the entire team on her back. And the thing is, is that her shooting has been a little bit off in this tournament. She's not shooting as accurately as she was. So she just always finds some way to impact the game. And in that last game, it was through free throws. It was like, I think she made like six of the last seven points for USC and they were all via the free throw line. So, um, but you can't, I think people, because of the injuries, have forgotten how good Paige Beckers is. And they are just now re being reintroduced to who she was. She missed the tournament last year with that ACL tier. She is so good, you guys. The biggest issue for UConn is literally no one's healthy. I mean, they mm. can't afford to get into foul trouble because they've got no players on the bench. They've got no one to go to. Paige had to move positions because there's been so many injuries on this team. Aaliyah Edwards has to stay out of foul trouble because they only have like two post players available on the bench. That's the biggest issue for UConn is getting into foul trouble and just being tired. These girls are putting up a lot of minutes. I still think, though, just the benefit of experience and having been here before, I'm still going to give it to UConn. But, man, it would be so cool to see Juju move on her freshman year. They've not been to the Final Four since 1984. I was one year old, and my old ass has multiple children. So that means <laughs> it's time. been a long time. A lot time. of generations, sounds like. <laughs> 